All right, so since I missed out on last weekend's video, I've been here lately, I've been doing kind of a video a month, or I'm sorry, I've been doing a video a week, um, trying to get some information out there for all the new saddle hunters or guys who are looking. I know that with the season over and I'm guessing all parts of the country right now, I know ours went out in January, I know that everybody's kind of looking to kind of revamp their gear. So for the guys just getting into it or for the guys who are like me and like to take the off season every year to get their gear together, I've been trying to put out videos just kind of showing what I know, um, stuff that's worked really well for me over the past couple of years, stuff that I've kind of refined and improved upon. Um, and I'm doing some breakdown videos. I did one long two-part series. It was like an hour and a half, two hours, and um, people watched it, but the general consensus was it was a little too long. Um, so I've started trying to do some weekly videos, breaking it down. I missed last week. Um, this week I've done one on the new tree hopper drill, and I figured that while we were covering it, um, it would be good to go ahead and cover my bolts because I haven't really talked about them in a separate video yet. Um, these, I mean, it's, it's really hard to prioritize, like, what is the most important piece of gear that I've picked up, um, just because between the Kestrel, um, which is a really, really phenomenal piece of gear, and, um, especially after going to Saddle Palooza and getting to sit in all of the different saddles, the Manus saddles, the new Arrow Hunter kite, all, all the new stuff, all the way going back to the old Andersons and leather trophy lines, you know. Just getting to sit in the full spectrum, it really blew me away just how much I ended up walking away being happy with my Kestrel. So that's a phenomenal piece of gear. Um, the Squirrel Steps, the DoubleSteps.com offers, those are a phenomenal piece of gear. Um, but this is probably, I mean, I, I've probably lost just as much weight and bulk savings on my running gun mobile hunting setup with these as I have with the saddle and the, the ring of steps put together. Um, this is this was a, a huge, huge idea. Shout out to the Saddle Hunter Forum member, VT Bo. Um, he's a mod on there, an overall good guy. Me and him have had lots of conversations over the past year or so. Bought and sold gear from each other, horse traded. He's the reason that I got my, my wind walker uh, hanging up in my gear closet. I've been looking for one of those for probably five years before he put one up for sale. Um, and he's also the guy, he thinks very similar to me, he likes light gear that it's easy to use and safe. And he's the guy that figured out where to source uh, these carbon fiber bolts from Rockwest Composite. So we're going to talk a little bit about them. They weigh, um, I just put them on a scale with the tree hopper. You can see they all package up nice and neat. Um, with the tree hopper, with my bolt carrying system, and with that um, uh, neutrino carabiner um, made by Black Diamond, this adds up to be one pound and not quite two ounces according to the scale that I have. And it'll get me 30 foot up in a tree. There's no swinging from aiders. There's no worrying about, you know, trying to get a, a stick on a crooked tree or trying to camel wild edge step over. As long as you have tree, it doesn't matter if it's wavy or wrinkled or flat or as long as you've got good, solid, healthy tree to tree into, you can put a bolt exactly where you want it. Um, you can climb up the tree in a corkscrew. <coughs> You can climb a leaner, um, which is something that you can't really do with an aider if you've got even a little bit of lean and you're using a multi-step aider. And I've, I've used aiders and um, I'm really impressed with what uh, the guy Ted Bright, um, I got to kind of see his setup with Cranford rope on steps and an aider. And I, I think there's some potential there. I've used aiders with sticks before, but I've never liked that swing. And especially if you're climbing up in the dark, if it's you know a rainy day, a tree is slick, you got a little lean to it, or you're tired, um, you know if you're not 100% like this weekend, I'm kind of fighting off some respiratory issues, and it just you'd be surprised how it makes everything drag. If you don't really have your A game with aiders, I personally feel like you can put yourself in a situation um, that's just not the safest. And with bolts, you always, always, always have something steady underneath your feet. When they go in the tree, they're, they're solid. They don't bounce, they don't flex, they don't wiggle, they never settle. You know, like a wild edge step or even a, a stick will do sometimes if you put weight on them and then sometimes they settle. If, if these settle, if you feel these shift under your feet, that's a very, very big problem. Um, so we're gonna talk about them um, in the way that I have them set up. Now I do wanna add a disclaimer, these are not nearly as strong as grade eight bolts. Um, if you're a really big guy or if you tend to be heavy-footed, 
these probably aren't for you. I weigh about a buck eighty. I've used these all season, hunted very hard in them. These have been honestly about my only climbing method for the past season, um, and they held up great with no signs of wear and tear. Um, they're, I mean, they're ridiculously light. One of them, when you go to weigh it, you would really have to weigh it on like a on a grain scale. Um, that weighs less than like a wood pencil. This has no weight to it whatsoever. Um, and they're just they're just so compact. I, I keep them either in a cargo pocket or what I've, what I've actually been playing around with. I didn't start implementing this until fairly late in the season. Um, I had in my full saddle hunting system breakdown video, I talked a little bit about a dump pouch that I had bought that I was playing with to fit everything. My tether, my gear hoist, um, my steps, bolts, drill, everything. Ended up not liking it, but then I dug around and I found this old trophy line pouch, which is, which I don't know why I never used it. You know, I, I got the trophy line and didn't care for it, but I kept the pouch. And um, that fits very nicely up in there. And then when you get up to the base of the tree, you just grab it. And that's your whole, that's your whole setup. Um, so that's something that I, I, I do want to mention. Since I can just reach back there, I wear my saddle in and I can just instantly grab these. And then I've got that trail out. Usually by the time, like if I see a tree, I say, okay, I want to climb that one. I'm walking up to it. I've already got my drill bit in my hand. And then I've either got my bolts. If I've got my pack with me, I walk in. And as I'm walking up that tree, I just go ahead and I clip those bolts right there. That way they're ready for quick access and deployment. If I do not have my pack on me, um, a good example would be now that spring is upon us and it's heating up, um, hunting hogs in early spring when it's very hot. I don't necessarily always want to carry a pack with me. Um, I like to go as light as possible and I can just clip these. I've got a gear loop right there. So if I'm not using a pack for whatever reason, you can clip them there as well. But, <clears throat> since you don't have to worry about packing and unpacking uh, a heavy set of sticks or like a climb with spurs for a little bit and you gotta put them on the base of the tree and make sure that they're tight and you gotta take them off when you get to the top. With this, there's no prep time, so to speak, for climbing a tree. As soon as you decide what tree you wanna be in, you're already starting to drill that first hole. Um, it takes me about 30 seconds to a minute to drill each hole. Um, and that takes, with the new drill, you can see the video I did on it, um, it doesn't take any effort at all to drill up, to drill. It just, it just doesn't. Um, if you're not in good enough physical conditioning, I've had guys say, oh, that looks hard. It does. But until you actually do it for yourself and see just how little resistance there is on there, you don't really understand how easy it is. If you can't drill, then you got no chance climbing a tree, drawing a bow back, or dragging a deer out the woods. Um, it's very, very simple. It takes me, if I'm setting 10 bolts, um, you get 20 foot up in there, that takes me about eight minutes drilling a fresh tree. And then once you've preset a tree, um, it's usually good for the rest of the season. Even here in South Alabama, where we have a very long growing season, and like this winter, we never got a hard freeze. Um, you know, most of you guys don't have that mild of a winter, so your trees are going to stop growing. Um, and, and you're gonna be good. If you drill something early bow season or a week or two before, you're gonna be able to use those holes the whole rest of the way through. You can either leave, if you wanna preset and, and just completely be done with it, you can preset it with grade eight bolts from a hardware store. Just put them in with a tree hopper. It takes you 10, 15 minutes to get a tree set up. You can even do grade eight bolts for a base, for a ring of steps to walk around on. Um, that works really easy, or you can just pull the bolts out and put them back in as you go. That's what I do a lot of times with these. Um, the holes are not that hard to find. <coughs> I've heard some people, you know, mention that they were concerned about that. I've never had an issue locating them. What I do is if you've got, when I put them in, if you've got a tree, if you imagine it was cut into thirds, the third that's closest to me, that's where I'm putting the bolts, unless it's a very small tree. And then I'll just put them 180 degrees from each other. But on most trees, I'm doing them off at a third. So that hole is actually facing you when you climb. And then having them tapered in like this makes it easier for your lineman's belt to clear the tree as you climb up. Um, very easy. There's no real reason to try. I see a lot of guys climbing. And uh, sometimes they're, they're kind of fudging 
with them steps. They're either really stretching them out there and, and making big, big movements, um, trying to get up in a tree, which in my mind is not very safe, or they're not getting as high as they think they are. Um, I've, I've seen a lot of 20 foot stands that were maybe a little bit closer to 15. And with this, it's very easy for me when I, when I drill, I set my bolts knee high. Um, and that works out to be right at about two feet, just over the top of my knee, you got about two feet. It's very easy to see, you know, if you set seven bolts, okay, I'm hunting at 14 feet. If you set 14 bolts, okay, I'm hunting at 28 feet plus another foot or two stepping up onto my, uh, my ring of steps. So I'm hunting at 30 foot. Um, this also works very well. I, I'm pretty much all in on saddle hunting. I do hunt with a wind walker some. I'll be doing that more next year. Um, cause I feel like there's some areas that are a little bit more suited towards a hang on. Um, if you're hunting low to the ground and really, really small diameter trees. But this pairs very well for those guys out there who are still, you know, running with a lone wolf stand or an old wind walker or one of the, you know, the Millennium, um, whatever, M7 micro lights or whatever. This goes very well with that. I mean, it, it fits in a pocket, a fanny pack, the water bottle holder on your backpack. It's very quick way up a tree. Um, <coughs> some point... When I'm not coughing up a fit, I'm going to redo a climbing video. Um, I'll probably just climb to a pretty standard 20 feet and set everything up so that you guys can get a feel how quick and easy it is to get up a tree. I'll probably do two climbs. Um, I'll try to do one climb fresh, and then I'll climb back down, and then I'll just climb up that tree just putting the bolts in the holes like you would if it was a preset. And then I'll probably do a final climb just leaving the bolts in and just walking up the tree just so that you guys can get a good feel for how that works. Um, but yeah, this is in my mind. I, I have tried, so my first climbing method when I started hunting was with, um, lone wolf climbing sticks and they, they worked well, but that was hands down the heaviest and just the clunkiest and just never felt great. Just set a stock four standard, you know, three step lone wolf steps. Um, so I did that. Um, I bought a set of wild edge steps. I bought a set of 10. And I played using them by themselves. I tried using them with the aider that comes with them. Um, I tried using an aider, messed around with multi-step aiders. Never really cared for that a whole lot. I, I was pretty consistent camming those steps over. I got really, I think, pretty good at it. Um, but on thick bark or soft trees, there's always the potential for them to settle a little bit. And you're just managing a bunch of different components, ropes everywhere. Um, <clears throat> I like the packability compared to lone wolf sticks, but that's a, you know, that doesn't compare. Um, I tried some modified um, APIs that I basically turned into a set of four man uh, beast sticks. Um, you know, double steps, 24 inch tube, pretty standard stuff. A lot of guys do that, do them with a rope mod or with a daisy chain webbing. Um, so I've tried that. I had a set of climb right aluminum spurs and I really thought that was going to be what I ended up sticking with um, and I just never quite got comfortable um, I could climb with them they were quick and I never felt unsafe but it never got to the point after after doing it I, I could never really achieve autopilot if that makes sense um, with these I can I don't with these I just you, you just use them um, you don't have to think about it and it feels like there's a lot less potential to go wrong. You know, a gaff out is always a possibility if you're climbing with spurs. Everybody that I've ever talked to with spurs, um, they gaff out at some point. Um, so that just, to, to me, this was just a better option than even spurs, even though you lose a little bit of climb time. Um, something I've always pointed out to people is that, yeah, this is slower up a tree, but I can start climbing instantly. Versus a guy with spurs, he's got to get them off of his backpack because you got to strap him to a backpack to carry him in, and then he's got to put them on and cinch them tight. Well, by the time he's doing that, I'm already getting, I'm already making progress up the tree. My feet are already off the ground, and then when he gets up to the tree and he steps onto his platform or his ring of steps, then he's got to get them off and he's got to hang them. Well, I'm done. You know, if I got a couple of bolts left over, they just they get shoved in in the pocket that they came from, and you're done. So if you count the total setup time. This is really just as quick as anything out, else out there. Um, maybe with the possible exception of sticks, and maybe at some point I'll do some comparisons, try to get with some guys and 
just just so that people can see what that time difference is. Um, but yeah, I've, I've tried that. I'm trying to think what else I've tried. I've messed around with trying to do an aider directly to the tree. Um, again, you have all the different problems that come with aiders. This, if you can legally drill a tree, in my mind, this is the only way to saddle hunt because it just, it packs so well. You, you keep the weight and bulk savings, which is one of the, the big, if not the biggest to me, advantage of the saddle system. You know, if you've got something like this, you know, this is, this is everything. This is my tether. This is my lineman's belt. This is everything. And I've got room for more. I mean, if I needed to put a bottle of water in that pouch or something, this is the saddle tether, lineman's belt, bridge, um, you know, everything. Now, you compare this, which is maybe the size of a basketball, um, to a set of wild edge taps or to a set of spurs or especially to a set of climbing sticks, and you've just kind of negated your, your bulk, your packability savings, um, and your weight as well. I mean, that, that's, there is nothing else. There's not another climbing option out there. And short of if they made ninja claws that's going to get you 30 foot up a tree as quickly and as safely and as quietly as a set of carbon fiber bolts. And we'll talk. I'm already, I'm jibber jabbering. But I can jibber jabber. It's my video. Um, my bolt holder that I made, very simple. I get a lot of questions about it. All that it is, is a cut up um, Allen brand elastic cartridge belt. So it's going to come as a belt with a buckle. It's made to hold rifle cartridges. It goes around your belt. It goes around your waist. It's just a belt. Um, I cut it so that it had, let me see, 14, 15, 16, 17 slots. So I've got 14 bolts and then I have two slots. I cut it down the middle, made two little slots into one big slot. That holds the tree hopper drill. And then I got one slot at the top that this carabiner goes through. So this carabiner serves as a nice little carry handle. It you know, clips onto my backpack straps like you saw earlier. Um, clips to anything. It keeps me from having to dip bolts. If you carry them this way and you roll them up and you fasten them, they don't, they don't really make a lot of noise. It's very manageable. They come out one at a time very quietly. These are making a little noise because I got pine sap in them because I hunt pine trees, but you see they come out and if you're careful and quiet, they don't really ever have to touch um, each other. So, and when they do touch, the carbon fire is, is just a lot natural sound than steel. Um, but that's it. The Allen gun belt will cost you maybe eight or ten bucks. Um, you can order them off of Amazon. You can get them pretty much any sporting goods store should carry some sort of an, a, a cheapo elastic cartridge belt um, and it doesn't weigh anything you know it doesn't doesn't increase the bulk it keeps them all nice and neat and just a really really slick system and combined with the new tree hopper drill you know that's going to last you a lifetime um, the carbon fiber bolt since you're always taking them with you you know they're not living living out in the woods where squirrels are chewing on them or anything like that um, they're not big and bulky where they have to go in the garage. I mean, these can go in your sock drawer next to your bed if you want to. My whole saddle hunting setup, it just hangs in my closet uh, right next to my bow. So it's always in a nice climate controlled building where it's not going to get tore up. Um, the price, um, I believe that they cost me about $120. Probably should have mentioned that right at the start. Um, I got them cut to six inches. If you're using them with a tree hopper drill or the easy cut drill, a six inch bolt is kind of considered the standard. That's going to give you about three and a half inches to step on, which is going to be what most like a mare steps or squirrel steps or lone wolf um, steps on their climbing sticks. They're generally about three and a half inches, four inches. Um, you can get it cut longer if you want to. I've seen some guys who went with a seven inch bolt just to get more space. Um, I don't really feel like that's needed. I got a size 11 foot and can climb on them just fine. Um, Try to think 120 bucks. Um, Rock West Composites. I'll try to leave that link in the video to make it easier for you. Um, so 120 bucks for that, and then for your hand drill, I think right now they're going for 79.99. So it's 200 bucks, um, <coughs> which is <coughs> excuse me, a little bit more than most of your sticks will run you. Less than you know, Dan Infault's B sticks are going to run you. Substantially lighter. And it'll get you higher on a tree. You know, three B sticks are going to run you 
what, $80, $90 a piece, $240, and they weigh six pounds without straps. That's one pound. Um, not even a comparison. Not knocking them, because it's a fantastic product, but this is better, and it's cheaper. Um, it's cheaper than if you buy aluminum climb rights. They were about 200 and some change. Uh, a set of 10 wild edge steps was 200 and some change and weighed, you know, 8, 10 pounds. Um, so, I mean, you're really right there. It seems expensive, but it's right there in line with everything else. And you can save money if you want to just kind of dabble in it. Um, Treehopper uh, website, they carry just standard grade 8 bulbs, and those are substantially cheaper. They're heavier, but you still keep that same compact frame so and that's all i got to say if you get any questions i know that was kind of a rambling video this was just kind of a freebie for this week uh, if you get any questions feel free to post in the comments look me up on saddlehunter.com um but but this I, I honestly would really kind of like to see this become more of a thing just because i think it works so well i'd lose a little bit of my competitive advantage in the woods um, but there's no reason like screwing steps. There's no reason for you to ever screw in a step again. It's just so much easier, cheaper, and just better. Um, there's no advantage to screwing steps versus this if you can penetrate the bark of the tree. So, till next time, keep an eye out for the uh, climbing videos. I'm gonna try to make that a thing sometime before it heats up too much down here. And uh, till next time, y'all take it easy.